All right, welcome to the Daily Space Weather, folks. Happy Christmas Eve. No time to screw around. Listen to Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. Here's the local yellow dwarf at 94 angstroms. And we see Sunspot 2753, I believe, is the number of this one. Forming here at a very far south latitude. It's a beta class. We also see some minor x-ray flaring happening actually coming out of the center of the solar disk i think some x-rays coming out of one of these regions around here over the past 24 a large quake strikes canada near vancouver so lots of stuff to cover no time to screw around and uh there you have the 304 angstrom view there are your date stamps, looking at about 10 and a half hours there of the local yellow dwarf. Here's the equatorial region and there's quite a bit of magnetism going around, really pretty much around the whole disk. So some activity kicking off here on Christmas Eve. Here's the GOES X-ray imager. And again, we did see some X-ray flares there, a couple small B-class flares. I think one came out of the sunspot and one came out of this plage near the equator. There you see a hot spot coming out of there around the equator also. So in any case, a couple X-rays happened. Not serious ones, barely even B-class flares. It's barely even an uptick in the X-ray activity. But that sunspot is a significant sunspot. We'll show you the, the Earth perspective on Helio Viewer in a moment. Here's solar HAMS analysis of sunspot 2753. And you can see it's got some significant fields. There's some space between them. And there's a trailing umbra. The trailing umbra is very weak. So that, that's something to see if that increases in strength or anything like that. Uh, and there's the close-up at 171 angstroms. We'll look at that in real time again before the end of the video. And thanks, everybody, tuning in on Twitch. By the way, if you're not seeing this on Twitch, if you're not viewing it live on Twitch, that means that you're not viewing it live, period. So check out twitch.tv slash smashomash if you're viewing this in syndication, if you prefer to watch it live. Here's the analysis of the sunspot on Helio Viewer, and I'm going to fade out to magnetogram here so you can see the way the, the magnetic filaments, the ionized gas. is looping to the fields. And that's your standard. Now it's, it, it is at a very high latitude there and the polarity is 100% cycle 25. So welcome to cycle 25. Also the 10.7 centimeter radio flux has jumped up to 73. So these are the kind of things you see when solar minima end. So again, Welcome to cycle 25, and don't be confused about which cycle it is. The cycles do overlap. KP index just come off the floor from zero up to one, and we are going to look at cosmic rays because we haven't looked at them for a couple of days here. If you want to see what they were doing two days ago, go watch our video from two days ago. Here's the Apatity Neutron Monitor. And... Uh, pretty flat over the last 30 days. 
The Barons Bird pretty flat too. Here's Athens. Thanks everybody tuning in, leaving comments. We greatly appreciate it. Athens pretty flat over the past 30 days. Also, Athens Greece neutron monitor. Next, we'll look at Mexico City's cosmic ray monitor. There you go. By the way, this one is accessible to the archives. It goes all the way back to the year 1990. How do you like that? Next, we'll look at Moscow, which often shows some wild ranges. And there you see the ranges at Moscow. Actually, the highest they had there was uh, on November 30th. Otherwise, pretty flat for the month. Here's Olu, Finland, and DOMC Antarctica. DOMB Antarctica not sending data. There's Olu, Finland. And by the way, thanks Ulla Udrup. Ulla Udrup for teaching me how to pronounce Olu, Finland. There's DOMC Antarctica. And there's DOMB Antarctica not showing any data. We always leave links to the Network of Cosmic Ray Stations site below our video. And here's a real-time solar wind here on Christmas Eve. That's not the right thing. I think that is the right thing. Anyway, I've hit refresh. By the way, this track's called Red Button, and it is available at soundclick.com. That's soundclick.com slash golden cat productions. Anyway, there's a real-time solar wind. We see the phi angle shifting around a bit. No surprise there, as there is a bunch of magnetic activity going on. Current phi angle is around 106 degrees. Current solar wind density at three protons per cubic centimeter. It was actually up at 6.9 when I was doing show prep. So just in the last couple minutes, it's actually dropped down. As has the solar wind speed down to 339 kilometers a second. There's the data from ACE. Looking corroborative. Nothing to write home about there. And there you see those couple little B-class X-ray flares, as minor as they get. Tiny, tiny little X-ray flares. And you could see them on the GOES X-ray imager, but they were dim enough that it was hard to tell which spot they were coming from. And I'm not sure if they were coming from the sunspot, so expect some, some more flaring coming from those sunspots. And by the way, I did sort of forecast those sunspots yesterday. And it all came from the magnetic data. Anyway, there's the electron flux, which has remained off the floor. It had been flatlined for quite a while there with the incredibly low levels of solar activity we had before this recent uptick. And before we look at total electron content, let's look at the relativistic electrons, which are still climbing, but reducing their rate of climb. And we do see a little bit of electronic slide here in the Pacific Ocean as the weirdest place in the world is around Easter Island someplace, maybe a little north of Easter Island. And there you could expect some GPS errors in the South and Central Pacific. As well as over places like Oceania. Oceania, as I prefer to say. And so that's, uh, that's the electron scenario. And th this will probably level out pretty well now. Now here's the ionosphere, and it's still looking totally anomalous over the uh, South Pacific. So you see this area down here. It's quite charged up at nighttime. And then you've got the South Atlantic anomaly, which gets heavily discharged. And then you see a massive charge disparity. And that is consistent with the location where we see that total electron count. So that's a legit ionospheric anomaly. We've been looking at it for about a month on the channel every day.
If you weren't aware, well, you're welcome. Here's the GOES magnetometer data. It's looking fairly smooth, although we could end up in the North Pole-oriented portion of the current sheet all of a sudden, like, just because of that sunspot. Let me explain. Here's the line of sight ecliptic plane field plot. We usually look at the top view. And you can already see this blue line being pulled down toward the sunspot, pulled down toward the sunspot. And that could cause a current sheet polarity switch to happen. Not that that's a big deal, but I like to be able to forecast the small little anomalies in the GOES magnetometer. As we don't do what's easy on this channel, we do what's hard. And we forecast things that are seemingly impossible to forecast. So anyway, there's the line of sight ecliptic plane field plot. And yeah, you can see that you can see the B field being pulled down. You see the way it's starting to curve toward where that sunspot is? So that increases the likelihood that the current sheet could switch polarities. And if that if that happens, folks, if that happens, you probably won't notice. Here's the top view. And you can see a little bit of a little bit of green field force coming through there, but it's kind of hard to see. Anyway, enough with the gong too. Let's move on to the magnetosphere movies here. And despite there being activity on the sun, there's not a lot of plasma right now. So the ionized, dusty environment around the planet being magnetized by the planet's field force lines is not particularly high in pressure. But there are Van Allen belts, so we see it. We see a bit of magnetohydrodynamic pressure there right at the end of the video, and that's gonna that's gonna basically level back off again. You see it kick up a little bit. That's from that recent increase in the solar wind density and velocity, and those have both since dropped off. So that'll that'll go back to a weak state very promptly. Here's the ground magnetic perturbations. And this is four hours of data, courtesy of the University of Michigan geospace model. And we see some induction happening there over eastern Greenland, as well as over the Siberian pole, the Canadian pole, and the standard magnetic creep into the southern Indian Ocean there from the south pole. And welcome to space, by the way. All your weather and climate comes from space. So welcome to space. And let me try to read your comments here, folks. By the way, here's where things are located in the solar system. According to the planets today, what is it? Theplanetstoday.com. Anyway, there's where things are on Christmas Eve, and it's very lonely on this side of the solar system. Check it out. There are no planets out here except for Earth. And it's only getting lonelier for the next week. There's where things will be on New Year's Eve. It'll be a dark night, folks, and there'll be a planetary pileup every day in the sky. If you have a low horizon before sunrise, check out Mars. Mars and the moon will rise at, at a very... Uh, Similar time, followed by a huge pileup. Mercury, then the Sun, then Jupiter, then Venus. It's a cosmic pileup. Here's the 6-plus magnitude quake that struck off of Vancouver. We're going to look at the rest of the quakes that have happened over the past 24, as we do daily. And there's a location of that. In the past 24, 
just going to scroll up the list here, folks. Another deep quake in Alaska, not at a large magnitude. Second deep quake there only five minutes later at a slightly greater depth and a slightly greater magnitude. And there's that quake at Canada. So we see this 5.7 magnitude 4 shock, and then a 6 magnitude, and then a second 6 magnitude, right on the same place, basically. And that one came in over an hour later, about an hour and seven minutes after that. Don't you love it when a brand new mouse has a squeaky mouse wheel? Does that make you want to take your mouse apart? Looking for any deep or any ultra shallow quakes, folks. There's a deep one at Kamchatka. The crazy, crazy volcanic island that it is. So the deep quakes have largely chilled out. And let's move on to look at the pressure cells. There's where pressure systems are currently located. And I'll let that advance and attempt to read comments. Be stoic. I don't think planets have anything to do with solar activity other than that the solar activity decides where the planets are. In other words, there's a chicken or, the egg, or an egg argument here. People, people think that Jupiter and Saturn's location cause a sunspot cycle. But perhaps the sunspot cycle is what causes Jupiter and Saturn's location instead. Just, just saying. You, you, can't, you don't want correlation to mean causation when correlation doesn't mean causation. And by the way, thanks for... Thanks for leaving so many comments, folks. I'm uh, unable to get through them all as i got to keep the video going as this is recording. And we don't want it to be too long. Please leave a comment if that's what she said. Here's uh, Sakura Jima is erupting. And uh, you can see the plume coming out of Sakura Jima right there. Volcano list also includes Mount Aso, flight level 6,000 there. That produced about a 10,000-foot ash plume at Sakurajima. Dakono also exploding, flight level 7,000. Revenador, flight level 16,000 as it explodes. And continuous emissions from Sabankaya. Please don't do the Fosbury flop. Welcome to winter. Again, happy Christmas Eve, folks. We're going to be featuring red and green views of the sun. Here's your value-added service, a.k.a. the U.S. Doppler radar map. And by the way, we have increased the delay on these videos in an attempt to get a slightly higher frame rate. Please let us know what you think of the frame rate, if it's changed, if it's the same, if it's worse, if it's better. Looks like some heavy storms hitting South, uh, South Carolina. Not too much lightning. Some lightning near Baja, California. Shout out to Ted Courier. Let's do the Baja 500. It's happening, folks. That's one of the plans that I don't tell the viewers about very often. We're going to race the Baja 500 dune buggy class. Dune buggy class, two-man crew. It's happening. I'm not kidding. Check out the atmospheric river forming. Making for some hot temperatures. By the way, thanks, patrons, for being associate producers of the channel. The real source of funding for this is 
our patrons. So please consider becoming a patron as we need a lot more funding in order to complete our goals. And thanks, Smash Team, for tuning in. Don't forget to stay tuned for a bonus section. I would say feature, but it's more like a section. Such as the that is an ass and that is a hole in the ground section. Do you understand the distinction between the two? We prefer that our viewers do. Let's talk about things that are slow. Sloths are pretty slow. I mean, sloths are pretty slow, but what can I say? But sloths are lightning quick compared to government bureaucracies. Oh, yeah. Check this site out. OpenTheBooks.com is fantastic. They've got all kinds of things holding governments responsible for their ridiculous behavior. If you start to read about what things like educator administration salaries are and things, you will start holding your local bureaucrats responsible, as I've had to do myself. Because we've got the grass Gestapo coming over and trying to find me for weeds, which are actually a hedgerow that's been there for 40 years. So... <laughs> Needless to say, there needs to be a point where the line gets drawn with slimy, scum-sucking, bottom-feeding bureaucrats, such as code enforcement officials who will come to your house and measure your grass. Don't think they won't. It's happened. Now, of course, it depends on where you live. Certain municipalities don't do such ridiculous things, and certain neighborhoods don't have hater neighbors that decide to call the code enforcement ossifer. Anyway, next time you see a bottom, a scum-sucking, bottom-feeding bureaucrat who doesn't deserve to have a job at all, considering he goes around suggesting that you must do thousands of dollars worth of renovations on the front yard because of weeds, including species that he doesn't understand or know how to identify, and it's actually an old fence with privet hedge and grapevines on it, so it's a complete non-sequitur, and... Uh, yeah, Mr. Nicolo, are you watching? We're we're coming for you, Mr. Nicolo. You're gonna you're gonna regret trying to trying to fiddle around and trying to find me forty bucks for weeds. So look for that. Happy Christmas, Mr. Nicolo and the government. So let's talk about some of the graft exposed in this zero hedge article. How about lifeguards in Los Angeles County, California, making up to $365,000? That's annual salary, by the way. Now, I don't know if that's Mitch from Baywatch. I don't know if he's also solving crimes at night during Baywatch nights, but it's an interesting article, to say the least, where trillions of dollars are wasted by the government. And by the way, another omnibus bill just got signed when everybody was all worried about impeachment talking out there, you know what's more graft happened and it got signed immediately, by the way. So that this is, uh, let me just put it this way. The first order of business at Festivus is the airing of grievances. I've got a lot of problem with you governments and now you're going to hear about them. Governments Citizens tell me your organization stink! Festivus cannot continue until we complete the feats of strength. Dear humans, go to open the books, sign their petitions, laugh in the face of bureaucrats, and call it a day. Thank you. That's, that's your Christmas present. Now here's another one. There was a time when I went out to a car and it was completely covered in a paisley ice pattern. Now everybody's seen a little bit of this on the windshield, and I too have seen little bits of it. But on this evening, the next morning, the car was entirely covered with these feather-like patterns. It was quite amazing. 
it requires a, a certain kind of an atmospheric situation where it's like the ground is very cold. It requires basically a freezing fog in order to, to get this effect. And I seem to have misplaced some of the images. I don't know what the hell went on here, but for some reason, Google's Drive Junkware had some of the files available, and now some of the files have vanished. So I encourage you to not use Google Drive. And uh-oh, I'm having a harp attack again. Oh, my gosh. Call Ojan. Oh, call the... Call the electrical engineers. I'm having a harp attack. Oh. Uh, anyway, we've we. I think I'm okay from my harp attack. Oh. Please leave a comment if you've had a harp attack. Now, again, we're not cutting the hedges down, just in case they install 5G, since. Things as minor as trees block 5G signals. Please leave a comment if you've been murdered by 5G. Now, speaking of being murdered and harp attacks and horrifying, horrifying things, check out Krampus the Reckoning. Here's part from the trailer. Tell me about this little guy. He's the Krampus. He's the Krampus. It's a Christmas demon that punishes naughty children by eating... Christmas time. By eating them, I believe. I think in this movie it only eats people's souls. It's pretty spooky, I thought. I was not aware that the Krampus franchise has like six films in it. But we're going to be watching this one possibly tonight. Maybe this afternoon. And by the way, if you enjoy the content, please press like and subscribe on YouTube. Now keep in mind, we do have beef with big tech. There are some problems <laughs> to say the least, with big tech. So big government and big tech, you're on notice. As the censorship and the giant heaving bureaucracies that can't get out of their own way are, are not going to stand. Since our censors indicate, oh, Moby has a heaping helping of crap emanating from his keyboard. I thought this was the one that says, a whole bunch of waste, fraud, and abuse emanating from big tech and the government. Okay. Anyway, big tech, you're on government. I mean, did I say that? <laughs> you're on government. Oh, you're in government. Oh, you are the government. Got it. Anyway, big tech, you can't break the internet, but the internet can break you. Government, you work for us. We don't work for you. Understand the distinction between your ass and a hole in the ground, or we're going to inform you in ways that you may not find enjoyable. We are on Facebook, by the way. And I would recommend you check out alternative social media, such as BitChute, which is an alternative to the Junkware platform YouTube. It uses torrent technology. Also, check out Minds. Minds.com, the social media network where you won't get censored or shadow banned, and you'll be able to see whatever posts I put up as an algorithm will cause your social media experience to be smoother as opposed to completely non-functional, as it is on Facebook. And hey, thanks again, Minds, Bill Ottman, and thanks again, Twitch and Twitch viewers, for having the servers available for the live streams. We appreciate it. Check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash smash mash We always have some exclusive content there, such as our zoomed-in image of the local yellow dwarf here. It's looking very hydrogen-y with its pink. And let's get to cosmology. Before we do so, here's a here's a little bit of here's a tidbit from one of Hubble's Hubble's early deep field images. Some people couldn't believe what they saw, and some people still can't understand what they see. <clears throat> Not that I understand at all, folks. As most science raises more questions than it does answer them, especially if you're doing it correctly. So check this out. We see this massive disk of gas, and once again, another thing that flies in the face, the young star 49 SETI. It flies in the face of gravitational accretion cosmology. 
So read the article here from phys.org. It'll be all over the science wire once again. Um, and yeah, 49 SETI. It's got these layers of atomic carbon, carbon monoxide, and then mixed up dust. Um, all where they would expect things to have already been gone. And yet there are the things. So, yeah. Um, check out the article about 49 SETI, as it is another example of the cosmic toolbox not being understood, as standard cosmology pretty much believes that everything is driven by just gravity and inertia, that space is largely empty, and that the main... Uh, driver of everything that happens is just basic gravitational collisions and we've recently figured out that polarization happens when things start to coalesce in microgravity polarization is probably a feature that causes planets and stars to form and I've been saying it for oh I don't know 10 months on this channel that these things form on ionization pathways where matter is able to condense Anyway, read the article about 49 SETI if you like. And we're going to be going more in depth into certain things, such as the Parker Solar Probe on the regs, because this is going to be returning data all the time. We'll be talking about the fields. We'll be talking about the Whisper. We'll be talking about the SWEAP. We'll be talking about the ESIS. It's pronounced ESIS. Yes, I know. I don't know why it's not ISOIS, but whatever. And, uh... There's some interesting stuff coming out of all of them. And I wanted to leave these articles up as these are some of the more cutting edge ones here. Uh, these are the particle counts from the ESIS, from one of the Parker Solar Probe orbits. Keep in mind that it's traveling at ridiculous speeds, so to get these really high density, high energy readings here, um, it's significant, as this indicates that there are these there must be crazy flux ropes coming out of the sun uh, where the plasma is orienting to those magnetic field force lines, which is what the ionization pathways are, just saying. Also, I would note this one. Uh, this is uh, from... This is from the... Uh, what is it? The Gabara? And what we're looking at here is an animation of, oh my goodness, it's an animation of uh, the way the magnetic field line snapping happens between the poloidal fields of the Earth and the magnetotail. So this is a great uh, display of the way uh, the magnetotail interacts with the poloidal fields, and this is probably happening at the galactic scale and as well as at the stellar scale. So if everything is quite fractal in nature, um, in all likelihood, this is probably going on uh, in the sun's magnetotail, for instance. It's probably going on in the Gaminga pulsar's magnetotail. And this is, this is why things are shaped a little more oddly than we may currently understand, at least as far as mainstream cosmology goes. And, oh, it's the gamma and if you're wondering if it's named after a flying radioactive turtle from the Godzilla movies that flies at Mach 3, yes, it is named for that. And we're going to go in-depth into this sometime when we have time, possibly later today. And again, it is named after this Godzilla character. Here's an audio clip. <laughs> Oh, and we've got some more bonus features for you here, folks. You know, it's Christmas Eve, so don't go anywhere. We've got plenty of stuff to talk about yet, such as the smash -O Forum. Welcome to the Neo-Renaissance, folks. I would invite everybody, viewing, friends, and foes to come and set up an account in our forum. It's brand new. It's newly unveiled. If you click that at smashamash.org, you'll get to the forum page. Just click on register, or if you've already got an account, just click log in and look for a bunch of changes and new features coming to the forum. Shout out to Smasho staff! 
for getting it up and running. Thanks again, patrons. Again, please consider becoming a patron if you aren't already, as that is where the funding comes from from the channel. Thanks, Smash Team. Here's some even more bonus features. We're going to look at a giant version, the most current high-res image. There's the most current high-res image of Sunspot 2753. And all eyes are on that trailing field there. If that field goes away, that becomes an alpha sunspot as opposed to a beta sunspot. And here is the color colorized magnetogram. There's the latest. And we'll play the 171 Angstrom's 48-hour view, where you'll be able to see the entire formation of that, as well as the equatorial regions. Anyway, I'm going to let that play for a minute. I'm going to attempt to get through the comments. And I'm just going to have to end the stream. Thanks for leaving so many comments, folks. Can't get to them all because we've got to get this video out into other locations, into syndication. So welcome to the syndication station. Happy Christmas Eve. Safe travels. Remember to stare at the sun and not drink. Actually, drink heavily if you like. Just don't drive. Seriously, don't drive. From Atlantic to Pacific, man, the traffic is terrific. Anyway, since it'll never be now again, may that solar wind be at your back and that atherosclerosis absent from your veins.